It's all time stitch up. You shut uh, down instantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a with a big please explain as well. Like, Hello yeah, there. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Knock off. We're back again. Episode twenty Is fucking it? three. Twenty three. Wow. 23. Yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. So, so made it, boys. We it's, fucking made it. It's so hard to keep up with all these weeks apart. Like, <laughs> I'm back, boys. I'm back. I'm uh, back on a permanent basis, which Fuck is yeah. um, Chris is back in the house for good. Yeah, which is uh, which is sweet. So like like you guys were talking about on a previous potty, um, I w- worked away for a while, but um, but yeah, good to be home. Works away, man. Uh, it's Slang for he was inside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was doing uh, five to ten for uh, armed robbery. Imagine right. if you're allowed to do like FIFO spec jail time. You could go in for like ten days, but Ooh, you could come okay. out every every three days. Yeah, some, to do it's it essentially what FIFO is, really. Does, yeah, does yeah, some, does some do that? Off. Is that like some sort of home visit program? Is that available? Or, I, I don't know. know. I don't know. What like to to. Stagger your sentence, like oh, no, just to like to be to, to be allowed out on like every every certain weekend, like, yeah, oh, like a, day, some, a day release. I got to oh, do I something this weekend, would, fam. Like, can I get I reckon, the uh, I can I get the leave? Something like that. I reckon that, that they would they would um, readjust prisoners to life in normal society that way in 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 one shape or form is that they would you know progressively sort of integrate them. Mm. Yeah, well, fucking without you a doubt. hope. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, they they'd have to be to some level institutionalized. Eh? Like you can't go in and like you're basically entering into a totally different world. You know, like fucking all male environment that's just predatory as a motherfucker. You're Ooh, not yeah. you're not walking around with the same mentality that that you are like in your in your everyday life. Like, hello, sir. Like, hello, madam. Like, morning. Yeah, no way. Yeah. It's fucking. It'd be dogged doggy dog in there. Yeah. Although there was something on like one of those shitty fucking. Channel 7 or Channel 9, like 7 p.m. Pro- programs where it was like um, some footage from inside some of the some of the Australian or, or Queensland, maybe just Australian jails, but like not bad, man. Like clean, new facilities, like they've got, you know, a TV, a, a decent bed and shit. I mean, it's a far cry from I just got finished reading uh, Midnight Express, the fucking 1970s novel about that dude who... Um, Tried to smuggle like two kilos of hash into um, into New York from Turkey, and uh, and ended up getting life Ooh. in a fucking Turkish prison. And like, yeah, they made a movie about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they made a movie based on the book. I hadn't yeah. seen the movie either, and I watched it after the book. But nineteen seventy one or something like that. So I was pretty dated. How was the film? Uh, Compared to the book You know how those things measure up sometimes It's, it's the biggest wanker thing ever to say it But it was nowhere near as good as the book Like no. you had to read the book <laughs> well, Always is I, wonder, yeah, why, I yeah. wonder why that is though Like why Is that just because uh, It's a subconscious thing Because you in, had to invest more time in it And therefore Or is it no, like I, a, I don't know I think uh, it depends it on the st- more detail I think it depends on the story You know mm-hmm. Like some story needs the more Detail that like a written novel provides And, and some things work better as a sort of brief short movie but i found that the movie like it it like jumped uh, like a head in the in the story of the book pretty much straight from the get-go and then all of the like turns of the story w- happened super quick whereas in the yeah. book there was a lot more sort of like you're getting inside this guy's mental process while he's there and just the fucking the like you know mental toughness that you would have had to have mm. had to endure that situation like because the biggest thing was um was he him not knowing? Like he kept on getting told that, like you know, he had three more months, and then he had three more years, oh, and then really? and then eventually, like he he was counting down fifty nine days to go home, and then they fucking whacked him with a life sentence because the judge wanted to retry it or something like that. And you just like because when you read a book, like I don't know, inevitably you kind of like put yourself in the shoes of the oh, narrator. Yeah, you yeah, you, you yeah. sort of get into their head a little bit. So you start feeling the changes of the story as they arise and fucking hell, man. There was a couple of times where you're physically reading it and then it's like, boom, the fucking lawyer or whatever tells him they want to give you life. And you're like, oh, you oh. fucking sink with him. You're just like, yeah. holy shit. And then, so yeah, I guess... So did he end up getting out? I guess, spoiler alert, but um, he fucking... He, he got transferred to a minimum security prison. Like he started acting like he was settling into his life sentence and shit like that. And so they, on good behavior, they let him go to this, um, essentially what sounds like an Alcatraz type setup on an Island and fucking, and basically like 
figured out that he could um, he could get out at night f- something that some something to do with the job that he was given because they all have jobs and shit and he could get out at night and every night he would go hide in this like um, like big fucking gas drum type thing this empty gas drum because he noted that when the the weather was bad there were boats in the harbor that used to come in and they had little tenders attached to them mm. so his plan was when the weather's bad and it's hard for the guards to see i'm going to run down and jump in one of those tenders and and row to greece and um and basically where like was the fuck where was the prison like on an island in Turkey. Oh, so it's like yeah. he, he worked it out that it was like, you know, many, a rowable oh. distance or whatever. But yeah. halfway through the row, he reckons like because of the, like the cold whipping rain and shit like yeah. that, he, he like you got to read the book to really understand. Maybe like, it was Alcatraz, fucking, bro. No, Maybe. no, no, no. Oh, it's was it? Turkey, Turkey. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> 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 I'm lit to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> if you hadn't already my, noticed. My, my apologies. <laughs> Continue. Oh shit, fam. Uh yeah, no, nah, but fuck that's that's pretty much it. He ends up like making it into Greece and uh and oh, the and the yeah. Greece Greece authorities at the time were like uh, you know, not warring, but they weren't really favorable with Turkey. So they just asked him, like, tell us everything you can tell us about their prison system, about the border there, oh, about all that sort of shit. And then right. they extradited him to the States. And Sick. But um, I think he spent, he, he went in when he was like 23. And uh, I think he got out when he was like 20, 28 or something like oh, that. Oh, so he wasn't in that long. Yeah, well... Well, he no, was in maybe, a long fucking time maybe, considering, maybe was, like... Yeah, I'd have to fact-check like. that. I feel like it was about 10 years, maybe just shy of. Wow, but, wow. Um, what a story. But a horrendous fucking 10 years by the sound of it, man. Like, real fucking... You, you'd have to do so much fighting. Not the um, not like. the same pictures that they were showing on Today Tonight or no, whatever no, of, no, of that, no, that's no. for sure. The, there's, like, a, a, a scene where he goes to the... Um, Gets sent to like a mental mental ward or whatever, like because he tries to get out that way. He's like, oh, I've got a crazy report from the uh, my like U.S. Army days, so I'll try and um, I'll try and tee up fucking an escape through the crazy place. And the description of the crazy place is just like literally the closest depiction of hell that you could think of. Mm. A eh? just like shit and piss everywhere mm. the stench just fucking completely overwhelming like raving lunatics just constantly in your face like no guards no nothing mm. just like an absolute like cave of madness Snake, you yeah. know like yeah. Pff, yeah, fuck dude. that and dude. you would you it it completely ruin your your mental state you know in one one way shape or form you just you I don't know if you'd ever be the same you yeah. know you know what yeah. I don't like about the whole like uh book to movie ratios because mm. when I read books and if I'm reading fiction, even true stories of like bi- biographies and things like that, I like to paint my own picture in my head of what that shit would look like. Yeah, like that's a good horrible point. example of it is a flashback to when I was 12 and the Harry Potter books first came out where I read books one to four at that age, like yeah. got into it and they end up being seven books, never read them all, I had grown out of it by that point. But if, like, when I watched the first movie compared to that, I'm like, Nah, this is fucking mm. dang. Like, yeah. this, this too. Like, this is not how I imagined it. Yeah. Sort of thing. Like, I'm out. I used to feel the same about um about songs because for some reason I would always basically envision my own film clip to a song when I would hear it. Like the lyrics or the music or whatever would conjure up certain images, mm. and then some film clip would come out and I'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. But apparently, that's why Pearl Jam, for the majority of their career, never did film clips. They'd do live clips, mm. like like they'd release, you know, uh, them doing even flow fucking at a gig somewhere. But um, but yeah, like other than Jeremy and Do the Evolution, alive, have you alive. seen Do the Evolution? Yeah. Holy uh, yeah. shit, man. Oh, that's, shit, yeah. that's an incredible film clip. All that crazy it's animated. cartoon. Yeah, stuff. If anybody yeah. hasn't seen um, Do the Evolution by Pearl Jam, the film clip, fucking get on your chat, it's YouTube like, ASAP. It, it's like all that animate stuff, but it's just like really sort of on acid hard. Yeah, it's like a it's like a um, hallucin- hallucinogenic depiction of evolution. Yeah, and it like starts yeah. out at fucking... Right. Crazy, like you know, single-celled microorganisms, but the whole thing is is geared towards like, look how fucking nasty we're getting with yeah. like industrialization and like some some like dictator sort of like yeah. laughing over these like tanks fucking progressing yeah. over like fields of flowers and shit. <laughs> um, tell you what, one of the get li- like you you want to be uh, you want to be pretty uh, you want to pat that. the turtle before yeah, that yeah, one. That's for sure. For that one. 
<laughs> I'd um, talking with uh, hallucinogenic things with uh, like dimethyltryptamine, like the DMT. I had a dream the other night too. I'd changed my diet up a little bit this week, you know, and the dreams inev- inevitably come like when you take out the uh, Herb Dean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you heard? Like, yeah, this <laughs> um, <laughs> Ended up... Um, I had this, had this dream where I got invited to, like, uh, an ex-housemate of mine, like, in, in this dream came up and was like, man, man, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. I'll take you, uh, I'll take you to some fucking, this gnarly shit, man. <laughs> go down. I had to crawl through this tiny, like, pipe space. I remember feeling really claustrophobic, like, in the, uh, in the dream and going up this tunnel and it was all slimy and shit. We ended up, like, pressing a button at the end and a latch opened and it turned into this huge amphitheatre, man, like, this enormous, big sort of, like, theatre where you'd see, like, someone... Chris Rock at a comedy club and shit like that sort of size, and um, Tony Robbins was there on stage giving a speech <laughs> to like all these Illuminati figures and shit. Like, straight up, yeah. And just woke up. He didn't. He didn't give any speech in this dream or anything, man. And I remember. I woke up. Remembered it just vividly. Like, yeah. I just really, it was right there. Isn't it crazy, crazy. that you're yeah. a, you've got that in your imagination to create that mm. scenario for you? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and, yeah. and you've got fucking absolutely nothing in your everyday life. It's like, yeah. all right, come up with a really like interesting yeah. scene with mm. Illuminati figures and yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah. Oh, I got nothing, man. Yeah, like. <laughs> Just this tiny tunnel too, like yeah, the, exactly. the crawl space. He's, he's got to crawl through a slimy <laughs> tunnel to get there. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like you imagine if you were pitching that as a show. Like, you'd be like, like man, this guy's off tap. Like fuck off, loser. Like yeah. that's a terrible idea for a show. Yeah. We're never going to be able to make that. Hand on heart, uh, man. Yeah. It happened, vivid, that, vivid as fuck. That is man. awesome. Yeah, right. it's it's a crazy the imagination, and that's. That DMT stuff mm. in a nutshell mm. is, is that really you're just – that's just your imagination at a general sort of normal level. Imagine in super, super enhanced level like being on sort of Ibogaine or ayahuasca or mm. just heavy acid or shrooms or any psychedelics in general – you are just on another planet, like another planet. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never done like ayahuasca or any of that stuff before, but the stories that you, you fucking hear about it, it sounds like a fucking wild yeah, ride. Yeah, it does, eh? Like a really, really crazy, like you say, just crazy state that the fucking human mind can get to, you know? Like something that's completely inaccessible to your just as is standard sober mind like you're saying you couldn't come up with that fucking story if you tried but then you go into you go to sleep and like you know certain chemicals become like more fucking than others and all of a sudden you're thinking some crazy shit if you can then supplement with other chemicals that like jack it even even further then fuck like it's it's insane the the depths that it can go to eh? like especially just because you it's it's really all th- those scenarios. Even though you're you're physically doing something, it's you're just still. It's just all mm. in your head, yeah. you know. So like you're living this experience and having this physical experience mm. where mm. you're like I'm climbing mm. things and I'm crawling through drains and I'm you know un- undoing latches and all this sort of shit. But you really just fucking lay in there. Yeah. So it's all in your head anyway. Yeah. Until like the moment that you snap back into reality and you're like don't fucking touch me like yeah. and you're like you know you 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 stalk in your sleep or something like yeah. that i often like if i'm having a real hectic dream the intensity of the dream will pull me out of it because i'll be like trying to scream and then all of a sudden there's some sort of switch that happens that's completely unconscious but i slip from being unconscious to being conscious and the brain's like oh we're screaming mm. but it wasn't actually screaming so it's just like yeah. Like, this weird, <laughs> like thing that comes out because it's just force, yeah. but like with no thought. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the, the, there's no physical action to it. It's all. It is just all in your head, man. I, a, a buddy of mine had once um, taken a, a variety of acid. He told us where the entirety of the room. He had a mate in the room as well, and um, maybe a cat, but a bunch. A su- oh, <laughs> no, almost not. <laughs> no, no, the doctor yeah. glass in the studio. <laughs> That's all right. Fish tank and stuff in the room all turned for Australian listeners will know what we're talking about. All turned into. Plasticine, like they're in a scene of Wallace and Gromit. Like that's wow. that's how he, his vision went. Sort of nice, went that nice. Yeah. That would be uh, on another level to just imagine that. Sort yeah, of stuff. Like, yeah. Well, crazy. I, I think anybody who's done it, even even the sort of the mild, you know, versions of psychedelics like shrooms and stuff like that, it's 
cool if you're prepared for the the like the tricks that your mind is going to play on you anyway. Mm. Because you know, you, you even the mild stuff. If you're sitting in a room, you're getting the color changes and all that sort of stuff, and and you visually can see the shit happening. So you're like, oh, someone just like yeah. turned, tinged the room like purple. You know, like mm. I'm mad. Mm. You know, but. It's it's not actually happening. It's yeah. all just shit in your mind. You have it's to crazy. be you have to be open in your mind to go with it too. You can't be like, well, that's what the hell? Yeah, yeah, you just, yeah. You go Ooh. with it like, oh, that's mad. Go dive in for the orange juice. It's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh man! <laughs> Extra pulp, just <laughs> a tap, a tap, like oh, verbal tap. Oh. <laughs> uh, for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking, about, what the fuck we're talking about, it's just like a way to come out of. St- uh, like uh, alleged, uh, <laughs> allegedly, I mean, I don't even know if that actually works. To be honest. No. It probably does. Actually, I mean, it could be just yeah. the placebo effect of it, but I've definitely, you know, mm. drunk orange juice after taking psychedelics and stuff over in London, it's taking mm. shrooms and shit. Mm. Like, just, just because, like, you, when you're ready for it to leave and you're just sitting and laying in your bed and whatnot, like, you're just staring at it. Because me and a buddy of mine used to pretty much have, when we do our shrooms experiences, we were pretty much in a room, like, that wouldn't be, you know, it'd be like, Half the size of this studio, which would be a couple of me- a few meters wide by a few meters wide, and um, we we just have to sit there, and like we'd pre pour these like glasses of, of orange juice just in case the trip got too hard because we were so naive about <laughs> it anyway, and like um and then the whole time you were coming out of the trip, you were just effectively staring at these like tall glasses of like orange juice like over in the corner and you're like fuck man they look too good i'm gonna drink one you know <laughs> it, it was more about just drinking the orange juice yeah i've heard also that like uh <clears throat> greasy feeds can apparently something to do with you know the right. fat soluble content or whatever can can absorb some of it but i'd imagine if you'd taken you know like a terence mckenna spec heroic dose of of mushrooms or um, you know, acid or, or whatever. Um, no amount of orange juice is gonna is gonna bring you back from the no. from the other side of the universe. No, no, no that's for sure. But um, speak- that's, that's that's wild when you when you hear about like the amount of shit that he used to take, like in order to get to you know that level. You know that crazy fucking. Next level shit like any, any idea what sort of weight we're talking about? Like, no, I don't know. Like I guess it would depend on the on the type of mushroom. That's but true. um yeah, it it'd fucking be big or it'd, whatever, be, yeah. it'd be large. Fuck. Mm. Definitely. How well, well, the the typical ones we get here are what like gold tops, aren't they? Yeah, I, like you know, it it would have a botanical name of like you know psilocybin, yeah, 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 something yeah, you yeah, could yeah, struggle to pronounce. Name, but yeah. yeah, the the street slang or whatever for it is like gold tops, or I think down in um in northern New South Wales they get like blue meanies and and things like that. But um, I, got- I had a couple of mushroom experiences in Bali. Um, and I think the mushroom experiences I've had in Australia in comparison, um, you really notice the difference in the mushroom, I feel like. I don't know. Like it's, it's, still, a, it's still a psychedelic experience, but it's like the tangible like, you know, flavors to it or something like that. But the, uh, oh, the last, last time I tried to do mushrooms, um, I don't mean literal flavor. I mean oh, like, you know. Yeah. The, the way that the trip feels sort of thing But the, <laughs> speaking of literal flavour The last time I tried to do them oh, Was on an fucked. island in um, uh, Indo Just off the coast of fucking Off the coast of Bali And um, <clears throat> They gave it to us in like this little um, Banana leaf that was like stapled together Like a little pine cone sort of thing Were they little truffle ones Or were they like the actual like Sort of ones with the head and the stem Yeah I think maybe they had the head and the stem Yeah But they were in this small small um like piece of banana leaf and uh we traveled from one island to the other so that we we kept them for like basically half a day before having them and then um when we 
like opened them up. I, I can't believe I'm telling this story. <laughs> when we opened them up, um, they actually had like some maggots in them. Ooh. And uh, I ended up like picking the maggots out. And, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and like, through it. And downing it. Drug addict spec. <laughs> <laughs> but, but serves me right because they didn't even work. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, I just got a gnarly stomach ache for like about an hour oh, and a half spewing. and then went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> spewing. No, spewing. No warm blanket feeling. Don't, don't, no do, nothing. don't do drugs, kids. Yeah. yeah. Yuck, nah. But did did you guys fucking what catch that snooze out last weekend? <laughs> fucking hell. Two oh nine. They should be ashamed of themselves. Like Woodley and, and Stephen Thompson. <laughs> Hang your heads in shame, you're under uh, the bus this uh, week, boys. Yeah. Straight <laughs> straight up. Look. For the first fight of theirs to be fight of the night, both the guys got into it. They just for mine respected each other's skill sets to an extreme. I just thought it was so fucking silly, the lack of engagement. Wonder boy. Was just content with point fighting him, didn't look to rush him. And Woodley saved, well, he got one takedown and maybe the last 20 seconds of the fifth round starts to get off. And, yeah. and look, almost put him away, but I still don't think that would even be a 10-8 round because Wonderboy was landing in that too. So that's what I, the decision was a little bit iffy as well. I thought Woodley had done enough, but uh, fucking hell, probably the worst title fight I can recall seeing. And that, like I said to you boys earlier, it's, that's compared to when Anderson... Got a bit of controversy. Remember when he fought Talis Latis and he's oh, just bro, on his there, back. There was a couple. There was da- a couple. Da- Damien Meyer this this was worse than that because these yeah. guys aren't Anderson Silver and are nowhere near as entertaining to watch as that fucker like. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. They looked really hesitant in pulling the trigger and, mm. and you know, it's it's easy to to sit and judge because obviously you're not in there and, and everyone gets that but you got to enjoy – mm. spec- you got to bring spectators in That's too, it. you know. You, so You just have to like, – yeah – Go for it. And that was the, the crying shame of 209 was Khabib having to pull out against yeah. Tony Ferguson in that. That was, that was the main event. It, it was. It. A, a, everyone said that. That was the probably one of the best fights that the UFC could possibly make in its current climate, those two going at each mm. other. and uh, That was devastating. Khabib seemed to have botched it, really. Like yeah. they, they – I don't – Ali Abdelaziz, like the Khabib's the manager, manager. I, those managers are all got a bit of fucking sliminess to them, in my opinion. Like a bunch of guys – with egos pushing their own yeah. agendas and shit like oh, that. Oh, of course they would be. So, They'd be businessmen. Yeah, definitely. Like, but just a bit sharky, I think. But mm. um, Al- Ali, like Khabib's manager, at, it's four a.m. Khabib's like in, in his room in agony as such, and he goes to the fucking. Uh, he goes and just calls a local hospital down in uh, Vegas mm. instead of calling the Dana. UFC doctor. He's like, "Oh, it was four a.m., man. I, I couldn't call Dana." I think if you call Dana White at 4 a.m. on the morning of a title fight and he sees it's your number ringing up on the script on the phone that he's not going to answer the fucking phone, yeah. Dana would be awake anyway. Yeah, I'll Dana'd bet. Dana would be fucking awake anyway. That Absolutely. dude would sleep four hours a night yep. if he's lucky. Yep, and so, he's said yeah, that in interviews true. before, man. He's he said that, right. you know, when people ask him how much he sleeps per night and stuff, he said, you know, I don't like sleeping. Like, I like my job so much. Dana. Yeah. yeah. He's on, on the go. Just, that's crazy. But yeah. that's the thing. Like, just call to just local wake hospital. up in the middle of the night and check Twitter, check what's going on. Like, yeah. oh, matchmaking, yeah. doing this, doing that, the business, yeah. the crowd, the audience. Oh, yeah. mate, you everything. Crunching the numbers, meet, you know, yeah. sitting with accountants, sitting with lawyers, sitting with fucking, <clears throat> you know, like television companies and mm. all that sort of stuff. You know, you just have everything going on at once. It would be a 24 7 job mm. being Dana White. It really would sure. be. There'd be no vacation involved. No. That's for fuck no, sure. No, no. So, do they, that's the third time that they've tried to get that fight happening now. Uh, what do you do with either of them? Do you just make it again? Is it, I think, I think that's what you, they have yeah. to do. Like they, but every, Tony's like calling out. Tony's calling out Connor now. Yeah. T- he, Tony's he thinks he's got done it. it. He thinks he's done enough. And yeah. probably and fair enough too. Like, uh, for the sake of it, I'd love to see that fight happen again, but. Khabib, if he doesn't turn around quickly, he's got Ramadan coming up as well, which is true. How, really? how long does that go? For? I think it's ninety days or something. See, so he wouldn't he wouldn't dare have a camp or have a fight in, during that time. Because really? imagine, imagine having a training camp with no water or food to sun, <laughs> after sundown. Yeah, like, fuck yeah. that. It's basically impossible. And really. he's 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 strict on that. You yeah, know that ab- absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that that fight, if they were to make Tony, they'd have to just make Tony wait again. Where oh, Tony's like, if they right. do a quick turnaround, I'll be ready to go. Like. Mm. Yeah. I was ready to go last time. He is a strange dude, isn't he? He's kooky. Very strange. On that, um, on the uh, embedded, he just he's mm. like Different. his his own character. That's for sure. Definitely, mm. absolutely, he is. He's got a unique personality, but a unique skill set as well. Like yeah. he's just a uh, very he's, good he's, on the he's feet. obsessed Tony Ferguson, and he's only getting better and better. And nine I, straight. I, I, is I it? Li- yeah, I, yeah. I really really <laughs> like watching him because each 
he's never in a fucking boring fight. That's Tony right. Ferguson. Yeah, like, true. Not one. You can go back through his whole fight pass archive of when he's putting people away and uh, win- winning fights, but finishing fights too. What was, so? What was the go with him uh, being offered a replacement, but not taking it due to the money? Mm. What because was the go with Michael that? Johnson? Who would he? He has a loss to as well. Actually, oh, he, okay. the last time he lost was to Michael Johnson. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he's gone on nine straight after he lost to him. Johnson's in town. Probably cornering Rashad Evans or someone like that. Yeah, I'd say. He, in, in associated there somewhere. Former black Brazilian. Exactly. Yeah, and he um he was like, I can make one fifty five. I'll fight Tony Ferguson on this card. Like, I, I reckon I could get down it or suck, but I'll be able to do it. And uh, Tony's like, I'm not taking that. Like, I'm not risking an L against a guy I've already fought. No, when the, U- when the like UFC was... comes out and says, uh, if you take that fight, we, you don't get paid as much. So he can accept accept his show money. For the title fight, without having to lace him up, just gets paid to do a training camp, basically. He gets his show money. Yeah. And uh, they offer him another fight and offer him less money. Yeah. Is he asking me to save it on late notice against a new opponent and you're going to give me a pay cut for it? Like, yeah. Are you guys fucking yeah, serious? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll that stick rubs the fans up the wrong way. That strange. Yeah. Strange. Mm. I guess they didn't want him to take the fight. I guess they maybe want to try and protect him or something because it, it can't be like a you know oh, this is the policy type decision because they make the pay up as they go along basically like the yeah. pay is agreed before they go yeah. into the fight they're, they're under it, contract they're under contract so uh, they ultimately whether they know or somebody knows there's somebody that whether it's their manager or wh- whether it's them or someone signed a contract that states you will Show get money. this for this mm. and you'll get this for this these are the terms and conditions like if the other person doesn't make weight and you do mm. make weight and exactly that ha- situation happened to Tony Ferguson where he was promised 250000 for his show money, which was like four times what he would normally make for his show money and didn't get half of it, you know. Like, I mean, because Khabib didn't actually – there was no fight, you know. So that, that sort of shit sucks. If he's, if he's ready and he's on weight – then he should get his fucking money. You know, yeah. like, I mean, if the other guy doesn't turn up, so be it, you That's know? That's it. Is Connor still going to be on the sidelines for a while? Are they just going to really ride this Mayweather thing out? He's about to have a baby and shit, his baby couldn't be that far away. It was no, May I think or something it was like May, that. yeah. So even May. still, he's not about to start a training camp for a UFC title fight right now. No way. Absolutely not. not. not and, and, not a, and not after the baby's born yeah. either. No. He won't be into it any time soon. No. I think he could ride this way, Mayweather way for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And just come back and basically ask... Uh, the UFC tell him what he wants, pretty much. Because you're yeah. like, look, I've been out on the sidelines. There is no bigger name in MMA than him yeah. right now. Yeah, like, it really exactly. isn't, man. Yeah. It's, it seems like there's a bit of a lull because he doesn't have a fight at the moment. Yeah, yeah. John Jones isn't in. He's still on the sidelines. Yeah, and you got. Uh, who are we talking about? Fucking Connor. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got Connor. He is the yeah. biggest name in MMA right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who, who are we talking <laughs> about? <laughs> 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 fucking oh, armchair yeah. opinions, yeah. fam. Shout out to the devil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my under the bus this week is uh, your boy Chris, Mirsad Bektik. Yeah, future uh, <laughs> man, future oh, so featherweight for, champ. For but uh, Darren, in. the damage Elkins fucking had had <laughs> some ridiculous fucking chin on that was, dude. Was that was getting, a fucking uh, bloodbath. He, was he getting lit up, Elkins? Or was it, it comprehensively Massard's fight? Like, if it had gone to that decision, he yeah wins one yeah. round, one and two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So You'd he dominated. So. I wouldn't say dominated. The other dude showed. Fucking some real like hard headedness because he got opened up real bad on one of these elbows, like, um, and uh, it was a fucking crime scene, man. That thing was hanging wide open, so that's why all that blood was on the on the canvas for the whole card. Um, but uh, but yeah, just fucking grinded like yeah. fucking knocked him out in the end, like unbelievable, man. Like I, I remember coming in into the house, you know, pretty much. Right at that minute, you know, like, I mean, with a minute to go in the fight, and then he just sort of overwhelmed him, and I was just like, "What the fuck?" Because I just literally asked the boys, you know, like, "How's he going?" They're like, "Yeah, he's pretty much dominated up till now," but and then the Elkins was just fucking pouring Still it there. on him. Still yeah, there. that uh, replacement lightweight fight was a fucking barn burner, though. The Lando Venata oh, yeah. and David Tamu. That yeah. co-main Tamu. 
Damn. No Stole one, it. No one had ever heard of him before. Lando came in having... Turkish bloke, man. I was dude. thinking about that Turkish prison when I was watching that dude really? fight. I was like, Is shit. Turkish yeah, there's some, some badasses out there. I think so. Right. Wait, I better check that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's from like Israel or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, that's right. He's um, Swedish. He, he's Swedish, Sweet. but but <laughs> but with a name like Taymur and and looking yeah. like he does, he's definitely fucking. He's definitely yeah. Turkish. He's got some Turkish yeah. heritage for she's. Yeah, yeah, more than Mustafa El Turk. Yeah, but you think you think Vitor will be able to pull it out this weekend? No, fuck no. I think Kelvin Gastelum makes it look easy. Yeah, me too. Me Might too. Might be the one of the last time. Maybe the last time you'll see Vitor Belfort. Right. This is the last main event at home. I reckon he'll Wait. go. He reckon he'll go again. Really? Yeah. Wow. Win, lose, or draw. Well, it'd be interesting to know how many he's got left on his contract. But mm. I mean, well, what's his what's his run now? Like, don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look up his recent his recent fights. But not pretty. He hasn't no. won. Hasn't he wouldn't. Won many. He hasn't. Well, he's probably won that one Weidman. fight to Dan Henderson since he come. He since he's That's come right. off TRT. He lost to Weidman. Lost to Weidman. Um, uh, won against Hendo. That's right. Then, yeah. Then he's fought a couple of times since then. Um, oh, it's I know it. Have you got Vitor's record up there? Young Dan. Almost fan. <laughs> <laughs> the NBN, cause. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so Vitor's got two L's to um, Masasi and Souza. Yeah, and then a, and then a win over right. Hendo and a loss to uh, Weidman before yeah, that. It's yeah. a bit, yeah. bit slidey, but yeah. st- he's still Vitor Belfort. Don't Exa- get me wrong. Exactly. But yeah, he's still yeah. Vitor Belfort, and he's still got a win in relative recent history. So mm. he could push on a couple more. How, uh, how many more does Mark Hunt have? He was stopped by Overeem at the weekend. Is yeah, but you know, like I mean, he was well and truly in that fight. He was. He yeah. was like, I mean, definitely well and truly in that fight. And you know, like was. So did you see Dana come out in the presser to? Uh, like personally give props to um, over him because apparently he had some like yeah. he was basically on death's door before hospital. he fucking yeah, yeah. He, he and he didn't mention anything about it or whatever bad sushi at the Bellagio he threw Bellagio uh, under the bus hard uh, end up getting food poisoning there oh what do you when did and, he uh, eat the sushi though what are you doing the, eating sushi yeah, at a buffet on the Thursday on the Thursday of uh, yeah so yeah. no no weight to cut really being yeah. heavyweight but fucked with him and uh, he was like. Went to the hospital on the day of the fight and got like all these approved IVs and stuff. Like, just what are you doing eating yeah. sushi on yeah. the night of the fuck? That's what no, I'm I, saying. No, That's on, what no, I'm on, this was saying. on Thursday, so you got Friday, Saturday. Even, but even still, man, still, where's yeah. your nutrition at? Where's yeah. your nutritionist at? He should be fucking shopping at Whole Foods solely. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. the, yeah. the, the first place you're gonna get food poisoning is the Bellagio <laughs> buffet. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake, <laughs> <laughs> have you been to a buffet in Vegas? Yes. Nah. They're like the so, they're, it's like a convention center. Really, it's like enormous. enormous. Yeah. There's no way that you'd have to come back 15 nights in a row to even sample like you know half of it. Really? Yeah, I remember. I remember being in. Uh, it wasn't the Palms. I can't remember the name of the joint. It was down the road from the Palms anyway. That's where I stayed. Not on the strip, but like one of the one of the big sort of casinos nearby, and they had this like massive. Uh, buffet And uh, I just remember like It was fucking depressing man Like there was this Just so many like Single people Just I don't know Eating like this Really bland looking Fucking mashed potatoes And just, just Vegas locals too In there Like that's their locals yeah, Going down there Yeah that sort of thing. I don't know man It seemed like a Vegas altogether Is, is a weird place to go away eh? Like it's kind of I don't know You think about You think about If you go like look at the ruins of the fucking Roman Empire and shit like that and look look at all that that sort of stuff like if in you know how, how, however many thousand years times like if if there's a massive fucking na- like natural catastrophe or something that wipes us all out like when they go back and look at Vegas they'll be like what the fuck is this place like all these different random buildings just mm. like smashed in together yeah. in the middle of the desert like mm. why would they live here yeah. There's, there's no nothing out here, no. you know. Just in this big like weird playground just that they built in the desert. stories yeah. of debauchery about this place. Like, man, yeah. this was Sin City. Mm. Like, that's yeah. it, straight up. But I reckon, I reckon, unmaintained Vegas probably wouldn't last more than a couple of Fuck centuries. No, not yeah. when, like shit in the Roman Empire is like yeah. hard out sandstone that's made of like plasticine, like yeah, fucking exactly. nothing. Yeah. Because I think they pretty much when they construct like those big sort of skyscrapers and stuff like that, they they're only certified to a, a, a certain, you know, certain vintage before. I, I guess unless you, like, replace all the shit within them. So, like, 
all the you know members that buddy keep them up and all that. What sort is of the stuff. go with that? With like you know how there's there's property and shit like that in in Brisbane that's like heritage listed and stuff. So it's like you can't actually do altered. anything do anything to it. Like you and and you, if like if it's altered in any way, you have to fix it exactly how it was and shit. Yeah, it's like a uh, a rule that they have based around like all the all the stuff that's pre nineteen twelve. And it's um and it's pretty much a requirement that you know like if it's it's listed on this heritage registry you can look it up on the internet but um each suburb will have like maybe I don't know depending on the suburb might have none or it might have like a spattering of them sort of thing mm. um that that existed before 1912 and you've got to like maintain everything how it would have been you know like in there so you can like even the tiles down to the tiles that you can choose and you know how the colors that you can paint it and you know and all that sort of stuff it's just really really strict like you can't do alterations you know without approval and all can that you put in say can you put in an aircon yeah. Shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be yeah. able to do all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. But you, just not really fucking do no, a full reno. Like, ri- I'm ripping the kitchen out. I'm yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You need, you need approval for that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You need an architect to like write a report as to why that kitchen that you're going to put in there meets, you know, like, I mean, uh, something that would have been similar to, to that sort of thing because right. they, they want to maintain them, as, you know, like mm. almost as, a, uh, as artifacts, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I'm all for it, eh? I reckon it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's definitely cool. It's That's like one of uh, ISIS, they're like, you know, one of their tactics smash or whatever is to go like smash fucking historical artifacts from other countries. Like, you know, if, if you're... You know, proud of the Sphinx or something like that. They'll fucking and you're not with them or whatever. They'll go destroy that shit. That's like, phew, that's fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, because mm. it's so senseless. Yeah, you know, it's like that's such a, like such a cool thing that we've got, and you're just smashing the shit out of it. You know, like it's just so care. It seems so careless. It seems so careless. Throw down your gun. <laughs> <laughs> fucking James Rain up in this bitch. <laughs> You guys want to go to James Rain next week? At the, at the Pato? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what sort of... Bu- he'd yeah. just be playing pub gigs yeah. and shit these he days. Yeah. Over yeah. If, if he's even doing... He, he's yeah, like, exactly. he's a fucking... Like, if he's still doing music, he needs to tour a lot, like, to keep himself oh, sustained, yeah. for sure. But I mean... No, I, I mean, he's a beast. He'd still be getting royalties from his songs, but it's mm. it's a fact, you know? Like, oh, if you're yeah. a working oh, musician from Melbourne, even if you've got some fucking mad tracks, like... You know, uh, what's his face? Mark Seymour from Hunters and Collectors. Like, I don't know. He wouldn't be like... He's not Kanye rich. That's mm, fucking no, damn but, sure. But I remember hearing at one stage that um, uh, that John Farnham, like, costs... John Farnham's in a different fucking... No, yeah, yeah, I know he is. I know he is. So, like, he's obviously famous and stuff. How many like, last time tours has fucking John Farnham done, though? Yeah, yeah I he's know. He's had 15 last now, times. And the, like. and the voice is still in a gang of movies mm. coming out, like, now and shit. So yeah. those royalties would be deluxe. Like yeah. 237? Like. Yeah. Two, 250K <laughs> to have John Farnham sing at your wedding. 250? 250K. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean... He's making be, hay while the sun shines. There'd be people that... There'd be families out there that would pay. Oh, to have sure. John Farnham Absolutely. turn if up. He's got at a their price for it. It means someone's paid it. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got a surprise for you Good today, point. guys. Yeah, and here's yeah. John Farnham. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, John Farnham's at this wedding? Yeah. Like, We've like, had. Snapchat fam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chance to turn yeah, the page. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit, sitting at a wedding and John Farnham rolls out. Yeah. Like, if uh, if John Farnham's two fifty, Daryl Braithwaite has got to be one twenty five. Yeah, I mean, like horses yeah. at your wedding. Like, yeah. I reckon, yeah, I reckon you get. True. I reckon you Actually, get James Rain for twenty. Bro, yes, yeah. less, mate. Less. You less. less. He'd do it for ten. Yeah, do it yeah for 10. definitely. <laughs> See, mate, we've got ten grand in a briefcase. Here. Oh man, shout out James Rain. Yeah. I, I love you, dog. Put it in fucking a reckless. Yeah. Put it in your reckless. Pocket. That's a fucking epic song. I saw James Rain and Mark Seymour. Support Bruce Springsteen at the Entertainment Center. Right. They both came out just with acoustic guitars and did like maybe twenty minutes each before before he came out. Mm. I tell you, man, the boss that that dude would fucking have some money. He doesn't oh, he doesn't yeah. need to tour at all, but he can still go do a world stadium tour and fucking sell every ticket for like one hundred and eighty bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, um, he's a that beast. dude's making bank. How and much he, tours right? must tour constantly. And he's, he's been and out he's, here a he's bunch. still quality, you know. Like mm. going to a Bruce Springsteen gig at the fucking entertainment center versus going to Guns N' Roses at QSAC, 
fucking night and day, man. Mm. Boss puts on a fucking show, like yeah, really. Three encores and fucking uh, for for sixty whatever, he looks great, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I hope I look some. like Bruce Springsteen when I'm that old. I guess much? you're fucking looking at him from a long way away too, yeah. though. Like, you know. Oh, I mean just in photos and shit as well. Yeah, that's How true, much yeah. do you reckon... Um, so good with his shirt off. Yeah, so <laughs> Still got a bit of a V Still on his abs. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, um, how much do you reckon it would cost for Alex Lloyd to come play at the 21st? <laughs> <laughs> just seem amazing. Amazing. <laughs> 5k, oh, like yeah. surely. Just I wonder if he's five grand right now. Man, you, here's a plane ticket. I'm, and five I'm telling grand. you, I'm telling you, if 21, if you're a fucking millennial <laughs> and you, you're getting you, your selling point is Alex Lloyd's coming to your 21st, <laughs> ain't nobody coming, fam. They're going straight to the club, see fucking, yeah. see Flume, Stafford <laughs> Brothers, or whoever the fucking. <laughs> And Stafford <laughs> Brothers is long gone, oh, son. That, that's our gen. And yeah. it would be we got no reference. And it would be so like such a TK waste. TK Miser. Yeah. Because, because they're effectively nobodies. You, you oh, know? I was just about to ask, do you reckon it would be a chance of getting the Stafford Brothers on? <laughs> 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 Absolutely <laughs> no chance, man. Absolutely Not no anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they were listening along. Uh, like, I mean, these guys yeah. are cool as fuck. What the fuck? Just happened to stumble across us. Like, uh, I'm mad like, tomorrow we log in the Stafford Stafford Brothers have commented on our shit like, yeah, well, fuck you too. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag fucking <laughs> Stafford Brothers knockoff nation fans. Uh, Under the bus. Like, absolute nobody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught a flight to LA once and uh, and spotted the two of them like stretching in um, in the fucking Brisbane lounge, really? like doing some stretches before they got on the flight to LA. Stafford Brothers. And then, um, and then just so happened on the same flight was Parkway Drive as well. A couple of those boys sitting up uh, like in first class and then a bunch of them in coach. But I actually said something to the um, Stafford Brothers dude because he was like walking past me as I was putting my bag into the overhead and I was like... And then he walked past me and I was sort of like, oh shit, Stafford Brothers and Parkway Drive on this flight. And he's like, oh really? Like look behind him to like see where Parkway hey, Drive went and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... All three of us, Which man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, and Danny Stewart on there. Yeah, like, yeah, shit, man. Is that that Danny, yeah, Sp- uh, Danny so. Spew? Yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said your shit. Oh, I said yeah. your shit. I thought it was you, man. <laughs> you got like 300 something followers, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, can I get your Snapchat, man? I always want to fucking. Goes all fanboy on you. Yeah. <laughs> so who the fuck is this guy? Like, like oh, yeah, man, fucking like back can, up, son. Yeah. I'm fucking mm, trying to put my neck pillow on, dog. You can meet me in the men's room if you want later. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till it takes off and I'll meet you in the fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm okay, mate. Yeah, oh. just completely <laughs> freaking him the fuck out. <laughs> And then you know, and you're not even, you're not even queer, man. You're just doing it to fuck with him. <laughs> is that is that bit in the in the Simpsons where it's like the two two line trainers or whatever, like, and somebody's like the cleaner or something is like, gosh, it must be exciting to work in the casino. And they're like, yeah, we are having a party tonight. If you want to come and shit, <laughs> like full like gay men yeah. sex, like up late in fucking Vegas joke on a ch- like yeah. children's yeah. fucking cartoon. But you're yeah. there watching it at nine. It goes way over your head. You're yeah. just like, oh, they're just the flamboyant, <laughs> <laughs> like tiger tiger tamers. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> So Smithers true. and shit oh, Like yeah. Smithers and Mr. Burns Smithers oh. So gay <laughs> Like just constantly Putting it on Mr. Burns And you just sit there If I started it. slobbering All over yeah. your face And sniffing at your crotch yeah. <laughs> If you did it sir <laughs> <laughs> uh, But that, that's why Like that sort of Is Is not sort of It's something that's got to be Bred into you to, to be opposed to it almost You know Because if If you Hate or discriminate against you know certain people like that. Like it's not. It's either because they bother you in some way, shape, or form, or you've been yeah. taught to you yeah. know, hate against. How's them. those fucking Westboro Baptist Church people like the God hates fags people? And oh like yeah, I've seen those. those. Louis yeah. Theroux's done like a couple of yeah, visits with those exactly. people, and it's like one hundred percent a cult. But yeah. um, he because he's been back like years later now that you see the progression of like, oh, this daughter left and she was ostracized from the family and like, yeah, you know, oh, right. she doesn't, she doesn't hate fags anymore and shit. You fucking, oh, imagine inviting that much negativity and hate into your life oh, constantly, man. Oh. Just standing on the side of the road with placards mm. so that people fucking like with inflammatory yeah, statements yeah. that fucking yeah. really like piss people off. Uh, like bad, why? Deceased what you, veterans and like, like yeah, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, excuse me? Especially yeah. with the, 
the amount of extraordinary loss of life that America has gone through in Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff, and they're out there all baiting soldiers them. Where, fags, yeah. Well, yeah, all these people could be connected to them. So yeah, it, oh, just, oh, yeah. just fucking cringe. Especially, yeah. especially if you were the, you know, you were the person driving past and you did lose a brother or, or mm. lose a father or something like that in in a war, and yeah. you'd just be like. You disrespectful fucks. Because they're, you know, they're like, out there with their own uh, like ten, y- it, yeah. ten year old children there, like getting them to hold yeah, the posters and exactly. shit to no, you. No, like, you're not no. even giving them a chance. Mm. Like, no, what are you, exactly. What are you yeah, doing? well, that's like uh, on one of the ones where Louis with them, the fucking kid gets like, there's like a six year old boy out there or some shit holding one of these signs, and somebody pegs like a fucking, I don't know if it's like a full Coke bottle or maybe even a stubby out of the fucking window and clocks this kid in the head Ooh, and like shit. all of a sudden he's bleeding from the head and bawling his eyes out and they got to take him to the hospital. It's like, you're his parents. Like there should yeah. be fucking, My son just you know, bottled. protective services should be like, uh, you look people, you can't fucking do this with mm. your kids. Like, but I guess there's nothing to stop free speech in, in no. a democratic society. So that's they, right. they can, they can do that. And and the person that's breaking the law is actually the person throwing the bottle out of the car, not them. But um, but yeah, that's a fucking. <laughs> I re- I remember, that's when free speech goes too far. Yeah, I, I remember like the year that I was on school. Is this girl I knew had to go to hospital because um, some guy like <laughs> at, no the, some young guy. Yeah, it was the guy. It was, it, it was the guy was um was driving along the road and this girlfriend of ours, like he must have leaned out the window of the moving car to slap her on the ass uh. and um <laughs> just hyper extended the absolute ass out of his uh, out of his elbow, like, you know, because obviously the car's moving and quite literally the ass out of his elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, had to go to hospital as Jesus. a result of just like dislocating his elbow or some it's shit. It's one of those instant karma things, eh? Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But imagine the the Impact of that You know like That'd be fucking heavy duty Yeah Yeah Even Get Some it. of those Those water bombing sessions as a kid. Yeah like, Water bombs are good though Because they sort yeah. of They absorb a lot of the impact If through the fact that They're just like this mm. Tiny little thin piece of latex And then you just get wet Definitely If, you, if you've been hit by a water bomb It's not It's not painful as such Like especially yeah. if people Are dropping them on you Yeah Because Yeah Yeah It's a pain in the ass That you're getting wet But Still- I often wondered. I wish I had got hit from that sort of uh, yes, from I, that sort of height. I'm saying we, that, yeah. and I've never been hit from that height. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's the thing. I often wonder as well because I lobbed plenty, mm. like, but mm. from it, the 13th floor. Yeah, was yeah. it 13? Was yeah, that right? 13th. Yeah. yeah, used to lob water bombs. Uh, have this bedroom that used to sit on the corner of uh, Avalon Apartments mm. down the Gold Coast. Yeah. And yeah. Shout out Gable Tosti. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, yeah. Near that. Me right, and Gable right in near the there. bathtub just yeah. lob- <laughs> lobbing around. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, uh, yeah, no, before his time, but um, and then there used to be this uh pedestrian crossing that was right at the southern end of Cavill outside of Avalon Apartments, and we used to just call it the kill zone. And it was pretty much <laughs> like a, a, a section of footpath that people used to walk into where it was within proximity of us throwing water bombs, and we would just go like sneak out onto the balcony mm. and launch a bunch, then stand behind those really dark tinted sort of Do- sliding doors that it would have. Do you think anyone It was ever such a dark you? tint on the building that, mm. like, nobody could ever really, yeah. like, figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Never but had any doorbell rings or anything? N- you, co- you couldn't because, no, like, the, yeah. the, the, the you had per- to tag. Perfect crime. That's yeah, perfect crime. that's what I, that's why I thought it was. It was just the perfect crime. Never, ever got busted for it. One time got, and I think all of the, the levels, like, within that sort of proximity did as well. So they didn't know it was us, but like a note under the door that, you know, there's to be nothing thrown off the building at any sort of time and all this sort of stuff. And we, I oh, kept on throwing, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. you got to persevere yeah. through that, those yeah. sort of, that sort of adversity. Empty threats. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not going to, yeah, in, in the act. And My buddy posted this fucking sick video on Instagram the other day. He's like a, a yachty or whatever. And so he's always in different parts of the world. But I think he was in, um, Fucking south of France, I want to say, or it could be somewhere else in the Med. I'm not sure, but uh, after some sailing race, they'd all just done, and uh, and like those sailing boats, when they've got like a full crew of dudes on them, they fucking hoop, like mm. they go pretty fast, and there must be some sort of like Riviera type sort of sunset lounge, like haughty torty club, like on on this fucking cliff in this regatta area and shit. And they just basically like have obviously all loaded up with water bombs, this whole crew of sailors or whatever. And they're just like pinning it past this like sunset lounge and all of a sudden just just Mm. like pepper this like 
huge crowd of, full of like chicks in there, like s- super nice dresses and dudes nice. standing around and shit, and everyone's just like cheering and shit. It's, it's yeah, sick. Yeah. that's awesome. He must be up on the mast filming it or something. Either that or they've got a drone or something. Cause, yeah. yeah, I reckon water bombs Epic. is almost a little bit of a victimless, victimless crime. Yeah, or, you know? yeah. You can't really get too mad, you know, like you're going to stop the car, but. Like, what yeah. else are you going to do? You're not going to call the police they, afterwards. They like, do if they hit those... Because if they hit those doors, like, they don't make a dint or anything, but they, they do make a loud noise because mm. those doors are really hollow these days. Yeah. Like, because that sort of material that they make cars with. So, y- when they hit, yeah, it's like, boom! You know, like, <laughs> like oh, shit, we, we got it run. Like, depending on where you are, I suppose, that, that that's the thing. That's the real exciting part about doing that sort of activity as a kid is the the thrill of the thrill of the chase you know because you you do you get that boom boom you know like where you hit a car twice and then they're like <laughs> swing around you're like oh shit we're out of here like, just running for the hills you know uh, yeah, yeah, if nobody was given chase, it wouldn't be like half, yeah. as, half as exciting. No at all. way. Yeah, exactly. The, it's a thrill of being caught that sort of makes it exciting, and and definitely if you've ever sort of partaken in. Throwing shit at cars or any of that sort of stuff. If you haven't done it, get outside and, uh, <laughs> and enjoy the great great outdoors in southeast Queensland. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of like public sex. Like. <laughs> uh, who's your uh, Who's your pick tonight, brother? Bronx. Bronx for me. Uh, just check. We've got the local derby. We've Melbourne. Got... Did you tip Melbourne? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Melbourne. Have, yeah. Melbourne won. So they, oh, they, they were on earlier. They won twenty six ten in New Zealand, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna go. Uh, I've gone Bronx tonight. I think they'll be too good. Yep. Yep. We've got the Broncos versus the North Queensland Cowboys in the local derby. I saw a p- few people walking around Brisbane City this Savo with cowboy shirts on, mm. representing few few Bronx Nation fans out there as well. But yeah, who knows? Could be anybody's game. Everybody's a winner in Queensland. So uh, yeah. we might love you and leave you, fam. But uh, hopefully, get some more content to you soon before. Maddie and I are both uh, away for a little while, so yeah, um, we're sort of doing so doing a few bi-monthly ones at the moment. But uh, we got some exciting shit on the on the horizon. We're going to bring you some uh, some different guests very soon. So stay tuned, fam. Facts. Peace. <laughs>